The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. It's time for the Guillotine Grapevine, a podcast for the land of 10,000 wrestlers. 10,000 wrestlers. Now, here's your host, award-winning wrestling broadcast journalist, Jason Bryant. Guilting Grapevine on location here at the one of the new high-rise office, uh, I guess, boardrooms here. A little echo. We feel like we're in a boardroom with Dustin Schlater, the head free sucker. What is the official title, by the way, of, of you now with, with the Minnesota USA Rest, Minnesota Storm? Um, head coach of the Minnesota RTC, Minnesota Storm. So, I mean, we've got a bunch of different things we've got to figure out. With, what sounds good to you? I, you know, I like the storm, to be honest right. with you, because I, you know, the clouds, the thunder, you know, or if you're Alec Ortiz, Tormenta. Yeah. You know, we like sure. that stuff. So you're in a new role. You've moved away from officially being a, a member of the Gopher coaching staff to this uh, freestyle specific type of thing. You've been on a U.S. world team back in, well, it was almost nine. 10, yeah, yeah. nine Eight going on 10 up. years ago. Wow. Yeah. And that was, uh, that was, that was when you were making the jump up and wait and, uh, as far as settling in the first first couple months, I mean, how long has it been? It's been a couple months already? Uh, we made the transition in May. May. So uh, a lot of things don't change in terms of where you're sitting in the office. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, day-to-day activities, what's 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 the first couple months been like for you? Um, you know, it, it has been a pretty smooth transition. Um, just focusing on, on the senior level guys, the freestyle guys. And at that point in May, we're looking at uh, the U.S. Open just got done. And uh, we had the final X coming up, the trials coming up. So just training the guys, getting them ready, and uh, a lot of stuff in the room at at that point. So the dynamic of the RTC and how you know it's it's a hot button issue. Some there's there's the haves and the have nots. A lot of places in college wrestling, and some of the have nots complain about what the RTC uh, kind of you know widens the gap between them. But when you look at it from the RTC, what what can the RTC model really do to help the University of Minnesota? You know. It, it's going to be a contender. I mean, it's been a, it's been a, a lull here for the last year or so. But to not just make them a contender again, but make them another national championship contender. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the RTC, the university are are pretty linked. Uh, you know, with RTC, when we're talking about senior level athletes, these guys that are, that are uh, that are kind of putting their careers on hold. You know, in in wrestling at the highest level, and they're putting a lot into that. And they want someone that can coach with them, that or that can go overseas with them. It's going to be in the room with them every day, watching film, doing technique. And college coaches are, you know, probably some of the busiest people there are, you know. So it's hard to have time to do both the college team, work with the senior level guys, especially we have eight guys right now. So we have a whole team in itself. Um, so just being able to to focus on them and their training, getting them where they need to be. And then also in supporting the college guys, but also the high school guys that are that are in the area. Um, having a centralized location, bringing everyone together for practices and uh, and just promoting Roman freestyle, Greco-Roman wrestling. We'll talk with Brandon Agam on a, on a future episode about the, the the dynamic of the wrestling room and the new facility that's going to be be completed. But as far as it's been right now, freestyle has kind of floated mostly here, and some some at Augsburg. I know Greco has been at Augsburg here, and also over at Pinnacle at times. And in terms of the practice structure, you know, where, where's the most is most of it going to be out of here here at Beerman? Yep, I think uh, for the most part we've we've transitioned uh, all the freestyle is here. Um, I think most of the Greco is here as well. They might do a, a few things over at Augsburg, but uh, when we get our new room in October, I, you know, I think there'll be plenty of space. Everyone can, can be in there at the same time, even uh, with the space we'll have, but even down in the dungeon, we're a little limited, you know, you get about 20, 25 bodies in there and it's, it's packed. So um, when we get that new space, it'll uh, help open things up. We'll circle back to the, the coaching aspect of the RTC, but you let's, let's dial back a little bit. Uh, you've been here in Minnesota a long time now. You followed your brother CP here and uh, ultimately what were the decisions that led CP here? And then the decision that led you here afterwards, was it going to be wherever he was going? I was going, um, well, I, I had already told him there's a few places that if he went, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to. <laughs> so he knew that kind of the, there was a few, you know, the rules and, and I, I was, uh, Did any of those rhyme with Schmiowa? One of them might have. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I was, I was somewhat involved for as vo- involved as I could be as a, a freshman, a sophomore in high school to be involved in his recruiting process. Um, but I learned a lot during that and, uh, it, it was kind of a team, a team thing with the family. You know, we were all looking this, at the different schools together and, um, you know, when a college coach would come, I, I wouldn't be excused. I'd be sitting at the dinner table with him as well. And, you know, 
Well, let's be to- honest. The college coach didn't want you to be excused either because, you know, brothers as good as you guys were, usually they hope yeah. to be a package deal. Sure, yeah. And, I, right, we're uh, letting them know that we're, we're more of a, you know, a package deal, like you said, and uh, more than likely that we would be going together, and, and they understood that. And and uh, so the thing that drew us here, I, I think, timing-wise, Minnesota just won their first NCAA title in 2001, and they had 10 All-Americans. And uh, that had never been done, still has not been done. So to see them do that was was pretty impressive, and we just loved the way they wrestled. They wrestled hard. They were, you know, they were, there was uniqueness on the team. Everyone was different, but they all wrestled at a high pace. They all wrestled hard, and and when you when you're up up and down the lineup, top eight in the country. I mean, you gotta be doing something right. Uh, I just remember watching uh, that team in in Columbus at the national duels just have their way with everyone else, and and it was impressive and. You know, start talking to Jay Rob, and that was that was all she wrote. Jay's an interesting guy. When you first met, what were your first interactions like with Jay Rob? Did you go to camp early with Jay? You know, because some people had met Jay when they were kids. Like Manny had talked about going to Jay's camps, you know, when he was a kid. Now, you know, what were your first reactions or impressions of Jay Rob when you really sat down and talked to him? Um, I, I honestly didn't know much about him, other than that he had a really good wrestling team. <laughs> like, so this is the guy, huh? You know, and the guy with the, the camp shirts, right? Yeah, like I did it. You know, it made sense. I was like, "Oh, you're the I did it guy." You know, see the shirts everywhere. But um, I remember him saying that uh, the resting room is about 68 degrees year round. So we we're concerned about the cold weather. But um, he was, you know, he was a heck of a salesman. But seemed genuine and and just seemed like he cared about his guys and and not only about wrestling but about later in life. And he talked a lot about just aside from wrestling. Um, setting people up for the future and, and, um, you know, mentoring people. And, and it was more than just wrestling to him. And I think that kind of, I know my, my mom searched for like that. So that was a big deal. We were talking on the way up. Uh, we actually had to move this interview up because, uh, you've actually got to, you, you're part of a welcoming group, I guess. And then we were talking about, uh, the tie in on how it was, you know, a guy that was wrestling at Ohio state, mm-hmm. you know, was there for a year. So many people are like that in college sports where they maybe they go and either they walk on or they're, they're there for books or something. And they, they're, they're there with the team for a year or two. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just doesn't work for them. They still love the sport of wrestling. Mm-hmm. They end up doing different things. You, did you always want to be a wrestling coach? Um, I, I always want to be involved with wrestling somehow. And, you know, I, 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 I think that it was always hard that the concept of stepping away from wrestling and not being involved in it, you know, it just didn't make sense to me. And I didn't know, I guess, uh, what level or where or what I want to do, but I knew I wanted to be involved with wrestling. And, um, and I think doing the highest level of senior level stuff is really fits uh, my skill set, And uh, I, I definitely enjoy that. And as we talk about, you know, that's what you want to do. And so as far as a degree, if wrestling isn't there, what's the degree and what would, what was the backup plan? Um, sports man, or well, I got my, my, my uh, undergrad was in communications and my master's in sports management. So well, I got the communications degree, so we could have been sitting here doing the same so thing. So if I wasn't coaching wrestling, I'd probably take your job. Well, it's not a whole big line for that. You can have it uh, after a certain point because I definitely couldn't do yours. Now, uh, you know, I want to touch on this this president thing for a minute. And I'm not going to talk politics here, but you're, you're you're leaving part of the welping crew. As much as you can say about uh, the profession of the family friend here, I mean, what, what's your afternoon plan entail? Um, the president will be coming into Minnesota today, and uh, yeah, family friend uh, walked on. At Ohio State for for a time period, my uh, my dad was a police officer, and uh, he trained him at the, the police academy before he went to the Secret Service, and so he's the station chief out here. And um, and when a president, a vice president comes into town, the uh, Secret Service friends and family get invited to uh, the welcome party, if you will, and you can kind of see Air Force One come in, and and uh, it's what's impressive is just the security detail, the the precision, the timing. Just you know, when these guys are traveling, it's you know whole airports roads get shut down and it's pretty impressive to see yeah we were talking as we came up one time joe biden came in and it shut down one half of of 62 and then 35w and my wife and i are driving the other side of the road like what the heck there's no no cars over right. there and it was strange but uh that kind of ties into the where we're going is like so many people that you've seen come through this program that may have been here a year or two they may have never been a starter mm-hmm. what does it 
what's it like to see them go off and be financial planners, to be high school coaches, to be weathermen, to be in the, in the armed forces? What's, what's it mean to see your former teammates go off and do things that aren't necessarily always going to be involved in the sport of wrestling? Yeah. I mean, that's part of, of recruiting the right guys and, and guys that are going to be successful in life. I mean, we lean on those guys in a lot of scenarios and we talk fundraising, um, you know, guys giving back, contributing so we can build these nice facilities. So we can have a nice wrestling room. Um, so we can have their support. So, you know, wrestling such a tight knit community. And you know, when you're talking about a specific program, a university, it's it's even more so. Um, so you got a financial planner that's that's graduated from university, you know, everyone goes and uses him or, you know, everyone stays connected and and that's uh we lean on each other for favors and, and just later in life that's that's your circle, you know. So one thing I'm curious about is, you know, there's attrition with with college wrestling programs as we've kind of uh, brought up, but what do you remember about maybe some of your teammates and when they had to go and have the talk with Jay when it's, it's time? I mean, what, what, what do you recall about what Jay told, told those guys? I mean, obviously he doesn't want anybody to leave, but you know, no, life, but life happens. Life does happen. And uh, I think you, you recognize when, not that someone doesn't belong, but if, if there's better routes for them to take, or if, if it's just not the right fit, because Division one wrestling is definitely not for everyone. Mm-hmm. Division one wrestling, Big Ten wrestling, wrestling at the University of Minnesota is not for everyone. It's not for most people. It's for a very small group, you know, and it's it's demanding. It's a lot of work. Um, and so there are going to be people who kind of either slip up or just probably should be somewhere else or at a different level. Um, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. And there's a lot of a lot of people that have been here for a year, two years, three years and go elsewhere that are still you know, we consider brothers that are, you know, alumni that are, you know, go for wrestling alumni. Um, that doesn't really change. Is that something that, uh, you know, obviously you're not on the current staff anymore, even though you're sharing workspace with them. Is is that something since Brandon's taken over the, the job that, that's kind of been consistent that Jay's methodology, methodology has kind of stayed consistent through this staff? Yeah, I think so. I mean, Jay was here for nearly 30 years. Agan was under him for... 15, I mean, Eggum's 20. Old. Eggum's like old, but he's not, you know? Yeah, he, he was around enough. I mean, we were all around J-Rup so long that, you know, a lot of the things he did and, and how he handled himself and the team um, rubbed off on us, and that's the kind of the basis for, for what we're doing with the program. Circling back to the RTC, we were talking in Slovakia at the Junior Worlds about how this position is going to enable you to, to travel more, and you, you alluded to that early. And, you know, college coaches being busy, whereas, okay, there's an international tour in the middle of the college season. If you're on staff, I mean, these guys, you said these guys need coaches. Why are coaches so important to those athletes, even if it's just one guy? you got one guy, one coach. Oh, well, why can't somebody at USA Wrestling corner him or coach him? Why is it important to have your club coach, your your RTC coach with you on these tours? Um. Well, you want to be, feel comfortable with someone. That's not to say that you're not comfortable with USA coaches, but you know that when you have your personal coach, their number one job is to see that that you're you're competing at the highest level. They're going to tell you when you need to do something, or <clears throat> um, they're just always going to have your back over all the others. And um, and traveling Eastern Europe or Asia or all these places, if you haven't done it before, it's a little different. You know, it can be a little daunting. And I remember the first time I went on a tour, my very first tour, I was in college and. I went to Ukraine and I didn't bring a jacket. I don't know. I, I didn't know aware, wasn't aware that it got cold there. It was January. So I just, I just brought a bunch of sweats to cut weight in. It sounds cold. And I know, and I was, you know, I'm <laughs> trying to get. My was born there. It sounds cold. It was wicked cold, but trying to do schoolwork and get everything done. I'm just throwing sweats in a bag to cut weight, my wrestling gear, you know, and usually at the college, the, the equipment manager, he packs your bag for you. So he takes care of everything. So me, you know, I was thinking, I show up there and it's like, wow, this is cold. Yeah, that was probably stupid on my part, but little things. You have things, to go through little, a little Celsius to Fahrenheit thing. Oh, like yeah. How cold is it? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I know zero is cold anywhere you go. Yeah. So. It was it was zero, for sure. Um, But, yeah, I mean, they, and they know they're – I know our Storm athletes better than any other coaches would. You know, I know where their weaknesses are and you know where they need to focus on. And sometimes you go to these tournaments, you know, it's it's not the easiest thing to find film. And, and you know, when you're there, it's different. You know, you can not only that, but see what – what's working at the highest level with these guys, uh, technically speaking, strategically, you know, what are they doing different than us? Um, so I think it's important to be there, uh, you know, on site with the guys. Um, and as an athlete myself, I, you know, when you had a coach there traveling with to Eastern Europe, that feels a lot better than going by yourself. Mm. Uh, you were coaching 
Gable Stevenson at the Junior World Championships. You know, he's he's here now. It's mm-hmm. not like he's he's incoming. But with as the calendar fell, the Junior Worlds actually fell like beginning of the school year. So, uh, one. When could you really get your hands on him in terms of uh, coaching him for the Junior World Championships, and how has how's his his you know assimilation to college life been in your opinion? Um, you know he's he's been around quite a bit. Um, being from Apple Valley, which is about twenty five minutes from here, his brother Bobby's in the team. Um, and with the RTC, he was qualified from the moment he, he got to Minnesota. So he he's been getting a, he's been around a decent amount, but obviously since he's been taking summer school, he's been on campus permanently. Uh, so obviously we've had more, uh, um, been around him a lot more for that. Um, but just in terms of, uh, the transition for him, I think, uh, it's tough, especially when you're talking about doing the world championships, um, after taking summer school and now you're starting the fall semester and it's a lot of new things and it's it's a lot of stressors out there and, um, it can be easy to, to get distracted. Um, so. What's the conversation like with him? You know, everybody expected him to win another world title. I mean, he, he blew through the field last year, mm-hmm. you know, got caught in a you know, guy that mm-hmm. was waiting for him for that position. I mean, that was sure. the, he went for the home run early, got caught in his back and they went for it again mm-hmm. and he hit it, you yeah. know, hit the two strike pitch out of the park. And he has a bad match falling out and, mm-hmm. you know, Gable finds himself not even wrestling for a medal. How did yep. he take that? What did you tell him? Uh, but, you know, he, he took it really well. You know, I think. Like you said last year, he was a cadet last year, and he kind of he had a, a very tough match with the Russian in the semis last year. But outside of that, he kind of handled himself and kind of blew through the competition. Um, but when you repeat anything, it's a lot different. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a lot harder, uh, especially for a guy that's won three age level world championships. And he three, wrestled three. that guy before in a cadet final. And he had beaten ago. that guy a couple times. Yeah, so he knew him, and he knew that guy was tough. We had talked about him uh, the day before when the draws came out, and. Um, I, I think that he's big too. Like he's a big body. I mean, yep. Gable's big, but this guy was, he was mm-hmm. tall, much taller. Yeah. Um, I, like I said, it's, 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 it's a whole different ball game when you get the target on your back and everyone, you know, you're walking on the term, everyone sees you, everyone wants to get pictures with you. You're, you know, the guy. Um, but I think we, we got a little overconfident in some, some positions. That guy is great upper body. I don't think he has a leg attack. I don't think he can defend leg attacks nearly as well, but we, we got caught up in his game. We wanted to, uh, I think, uh, prove to him, show him that we can go upper body with him. And, and like you said, the first takedown worked out well, but made the mistake of going back to it and inside tripping from double unders, um, which is something hopefully we won't do again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but he, I mean, it's the world championships. These guys are tough. I mean, it's not an easy tournament. Mm. Uh, you wrestle that tournament 10 times and, you know, I think Gable I think wins Gable nine, nine of them, yeah. but <laughs> there's still that one time where the one he doesn't win was to do the one we just, right. Did. Where you get thrown and caught. I don't think if that match is six minutes regulation, I don't think he can lose based on points, but he lost, so that's it's over. It's behind us, and I think, um, honestly, probably a, a little bit of relief, mm-hmm. if anything, is what I saw in, in Gable, and um, he handled very well. And it, it, for him, it's like, all right, let's let's go back to work. Now I got to focus on the college season, and uh, you know, another challenge ahead. So he also said at the at the team banquet afterwards, where we were just crushing pizza, which was actually pretty good for Slovakia, mm-hmm. is that he had, he plans going seniors full-time next year. I mean, granted, he's still got two more years of junior eligibility, mm-hmm. but and he said, you know, he might, he even alluded to the fact, you know, if it doesn't work out, you know, senior mm-hmm. doesn't work out, you know, I've still got junior eligibility. But when you've got a freshman, a true freshman making these type of, of, of you know, goals for himself, how does that Im- Im- impact not just the coaching staff, but all the athletes around him? Oh, it's got a tremendous impact. I mean, when you're, when you're a guy stepping in into the college room and you're, you truly expect to win an NCAA title your first year that, I mean, people see that and they're like, well, why can't I, why, why are my ex- expectations differently? You know, I think that raises the the intensity, the, the level, of, you know, in the room, other guys feed off of that. Um, and you met Gable, he's got lots of confidence to go around. So uh, I think that's, that's good for not only him, but the team. Any similarities you see between you and him? I mean, you won the title as a true freshman. You know, you only took one loss as, as a freshman. That was back in like November. I mean, then you went on a run that was pretty impressive. The people you beat en route to that title. Mm-hmm. Do you see any similarities, or do you see something that, you know, what are you? What is your experience going to be able to do to help him through this journey if he wants to win a title as a true freshman? Um, I think he. I mean, I think he's in the right the right path. Um, he's got a good head on his shoulders. Um, I think. You know, we're both pretty advanced at a young age. And uh, the good thing is he's wrestled the best guys and he's beat the best guys 
at the senior level in our country. I mean, he got fourth at the senior world team trials this year. Um, lost to Tony Nelson, his training partner, to to be on the national team as a as a guy who just turned eighteen years old. So mm-hmm. I should say that he's far much farther ahead than than I probably was. But um, and, and at heavyweight to to boot, but um, he he's a student of the sport and he'll continue to learn. And that's that's the thing about him. Is he's got the swagger, but he in a way he's he's humble and he understands that you know he's got a lot of a long way to go. Mm-hmm. You know, and he. He's great about getting with uh, some of our better senior level guys with Hayden Zilmer and Tony Nelson and Michael Krails and and these guys and challenging himself and and it's uh it's impressive you know the maturity the 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 wrestling sense that he has you know he's he's, he's a gamer and he's he's a thinker he's smart out there so and it's the same when he's training he you can tell he's thinking and uh, put himself in good positions and good situations where he's going to get better and improve. And you and him are alike in, in the aspect that you had older brothers on the team when you got mm-hmm. here. And, you know, while Gable hasn't wrestled an official college match yet, uh, his credentials are high. There's high expectations for him, whereas Bobby hasn't really come through and, uh, you know, hasn't lived up to his number one ranking, so mm-hmm. to speak, yet. And, then, you know, college wrestling is hard. I remember running into you when you won the NCAA title one year and you're standing, I was like, Hey, congrats. And then I saw CP and, it, and CP didn't place. And it was like a very awkward thing for me to try to congratulate one mm-hmm. and like, Oh crap. You know, you feel awkward. Yeah. How is, how is the, have you noticed Bobby relate to Gable's success and vice versa? I mean, they're both ranked number one coming out of high school. Uh, they're, they're, they were both high expectations. Whereas, you know, CP didn't quite hit the benchmarks that people expected of him. Whereas you came in and won right away. Is there anything from your experience that you might be able to help if something such, you know, comes up where Gable's maybe depressed about Bobby, not winning a match you should have or something like that. Yeah. It's tough when you, when you get the family dynamic, I mean, it's, it's great, you know, college wrestling to grind. It's good to have family there that you can lean on. And, and well, how hard is it as a sibling to see that, to know that like people are congratulating you and yeah. your brother standing well, and, 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 like, uh. and, and that's the hardest part is I would get more upset when my brother lost than if I lost. Mm-hmm. And I think it's probably the same with the Stevenson brothers. You know, I know how into, into the matches they get with each other. And it's like, you gotta, you gotta take a step back. And, and it was always easier for me because I was, I was 49. My brother was 57. So I got to wrestle first. But for him to watch and be warming up and kind of getting involved in the match and you're kind of getting outside of you know your own head a little bit um, it is definitely you get caught up in the moment. And I think that's challenging. Um, like I said, when you're at the NCAA tournament, if you look over and you say your brother gets upset or gets beat, you know that's you got to be able to block that out and focus on yourself, which is easier said than done. When we're talking family here, that you know, mm-hmm. especially wrestling family where it's super tight knit I mean, training like, partners. It, yeah, it's your training partner for yeah. It's the guy you, you the train world. with, you grind with, that you get up in the morning and run sprints with. That's so it, it can definitely hurt, but you got to be able to just shut everything else out and focus on yourself. And that's, that's ultimately what they want, you know, and it's the same. So, and we are putting the cart before the horse a little bit with, with them because they haven't been on a team together since high school. Mm-hmm. And do you think Gable being in the lineup is going to help Bobby? Absolutely. I think so. I mean, I, I don't see how it couldn't, I think just train with him, having them back in there consistently then spending time together. But, um, yeah, I think I think like we talked about before, Gable's going to hopefully elevate uh, everyone on the team um, at the level he's at, and, and no different with his brother. I mean, maybe hopefully more so with his brother that he'll uh, respond well to that and pick things up. As you moved off the staff, that opened up a, a spot for which is weird—a non-gopher to be on right. the staff. Trevor Branville coming in, and he's not from that far away, you mm-hmm. know, just across the border there. But you know, is it is it different to have a you know a different face that you know you guys didn't you know, battle with coming through colleges, you know, yep. Becker and Egham and Zach are gophers and this guy's a badger or was a badger. Yeah. It's uh kind of went against everything we've done. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I thought oh, it's, yeah, That's a sound bite and a half right there. It's, it's nice. You know, and like you said, it, it's not like we got some guy and he uprooted his family from California or somewhere far away. It's he's from, you know, 45 minutes away. R- River Falls, Wisconsin, right across the border, as is his wife's family. And he can get spotted cow easier he, than anybody. Yeah, he can. We can send him over. There, and that's part of his job is we send him over there to get the get the spotted cow for us. Yeah, so you can back. say that as an RTC <laughs> yeah, yeah. coach. You like, can't can say that as a college coach. I can say that. OK, good. Yeah. Um, and this show isn't this isn't paid for by the University of Minnesota. Okay. So we're good. So we're set. This is all, all the deal. Right. This is why we're going to do shows from Insight Brewing, which is right yep. here where Pat Smith lives in the future. So. Word to the wise, folks. We're going to be doing some shows for Insight. 
loosen things up a bit. Maybe so. some maybe some other places. I like Fair State. We can talk yeah. about craft beer all we want, but sure. that's that's later. We're still talking wrestling. Dustin will loosen up when we have a you know <laughs> yeah. get, get, get a spotted cow here. I like that. I mean, I love Minnesota beer, but that's a that's a good one. Anyway, oh, yeah. back to. The the, All right. the enemy in the hand. Aside from that, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I think we all knew Trevor a little bit. Um, obviously, with him being from relatively close by in the family, it made sense in in that sense. But uh, you know, he fitted he fit the mold that we were looking for. I think we wanted another big guy coach. I see with me and Becker, middleweight. Sanders is uh, the little guy, and and Agum's uh, getting older. Can I say that? <laughs> Man, that's the second time we've talked. We've called him old, but youthful. Like he's not like super old. But, you know, someone that can wrestle with Gable on the road in uh, uh, 97 Powers 84, like, you know, a big guy coach is what we needed. And and um, someone who can get out there and uh, recruit and, and hustle and be in every high school gym and, and be all over the place in, in that in that sense. And so, um, Trevor, that, you know, that's that's his thing. I mean, he's very personable. No, no um, just super tough on the mat, too. Just oh, yeah. grinder. It's yes. Nice. And he doesn't get enough credit. I mean... He's good. I mean, you see him in the room, and obviously he's got the coach thing where he's wrestling his wrestlers and he's beating him up a little bit. But um, he, he's a tough, 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 tough dude and um, a family man, just just a good all-around good guy. You know, someone that, uh, you know, I think parents will trust their kids with. And he's, you know, like I said, very personable and and um, cares about the guys. And I think that'll be good for us. And, get, and brings in an outside perspective and has, you know, a whole different network of connections outside of the the Minnesota alum and uh, different ideas. So I think uh, it's been great. A couple of questions we reached out to our friends at the guillotine message board about, uh, about the role. And so the questions are, is uh, what are first question, what are the possibilities of Minnesota USA wrestling and the university of Minnesota presenting freestyling Greco training camps and clinics throughout the spring season, uh, possibly in lieu of all these random opens uh, clinics. Yeah, I, I guess I'm guessing the questions that but what things can be happening more at the University of Minnesota. I know that there's some for, questions about for USA wrestling events, yep. age group stuff, because that's where you're, you're also going to be dealing with, uh, you know, it's the storm. You've got, you know, Dan Chandler oversees a lot of the Greco mm -hmm. from, you know, he's he's in the corner for the kids, too, sure. in Fargo. So uh, things like that are, are more events here at the U for Minnesota USA wrestling. Well, I would say the, the one thing is um, the RTC practices are open to any wrestler, high school age wrestler within 250 miles of campus that have placed uh, top four in the state or all American at Fargo. Um, I mean, the, it's listed online, mm -hmm. um, the eligibility, uh, the stuff. So we encourage anyone, if you qualify to come in and, uh, you know, wrestle with the best and wrestle with the college guys, the senior level guys, and, you know, get some of the high level technique. Um, and then we'll start implementing obviously some, uh, some clinics and camps for all age groups and, and, Ideally, we want to be in the new wrestling room where we can fit everyone in there, and that'll be done at the end of this month. And uh, um, so moving forward, I think that's what we'll look to do. Being on the job since May, you probably haven't had a whole lot to, to get your feet wet with our next question. This one actually from Jeff Bishi. How does recruiting wrestlers to the RTC compare to recruiting wrestlers on the college level? Um, well, you know, it's – like we said, big deal is having a coach. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you're – if it's just the college staff – and you versus having your own specific personal coach that's going to travel overseas you go to camps with you that's a big, very big deal um but if, you know it's not we're not dealing with scholarship money here we're going to do percentages it's it's just where can you get a job too i mean yep it's what, what what can what can they pay you would it be fundraised to pay these guys um is there job opportunities aside from that um and for us being in the cities we sell the cities mm -hmm. you know there's more opportunities here than probably any other place with a college program or you know uh so location is a big deal for us. Um, well, cause look at Iowa, for example, let's, let's, let's draw a comparison to, you know, Iowa city, Cedar Rapids. Yeah, it's big, but a lot of the, the jobs are in Des Moines. Right. And without a division one program there, you know, I mean, Ames is the closest thing you're getting. And that's, it's, it's 30 some minutes right. away. You can't really sell Des Moines when you're in Ames. Right. You can try. Right. But here, I mean, we're looking at, we can look out the window and see us bank stadium right. site of the 2020 NCAA championships, right. which we're stoked about. We can see the skyline. We can see, you know, yeah, on the right day, you can probably see St. Paul, but mm -hmm. you're, you're selling the cities. Right. And there's just more opportunities here while you train. If you're looking for more employment or you're looking for, you know, other things and then setting you up for uh, 
for jobs later in life. And that's going back to, you know, the importance of having alumni that are in different positions that are financial planners or this or that, you know, they're working with these guys and getting to know some of these senior level guys that we're bringing from the outside and just different in, in, in the fact that we're not going to their house and we're not, we're not selling mom and dad. We're not, you know, these are, these are men. These are, you know, these guys, are you might be selling a wife, you're selling a wife. You're probably not selling mom. You're selling the wife. And, uh, these are professionals. Um, so it's different in that sense. Uh, they, you know, I think once you take care of that fin financial piece for them, I think it's more about knowing that they're supported, that, you know, the staff cares about them and is going to put their interests, not necessarily in front of the college guys, but that it's important. And, and you know, they're going to get their time in with coach too. And, and they get the right training partners and the right setup where they can, you know, reach their goals and make teams and win medals. Question coming about who makes a decision on who gets sponsored in terms of, of RTC you know, senior level stuff. Is it, is it your job as the head coach or is, is it the, the gopher staff or is it some type of advisory board? So uh, say Joe Q public from, you know, just graduated from St. Cloud state and wants to come in and be an RTC senior level athlete. Are they going to be, you know, are they going to be funded right away? I mean, who makes those decisions and how does that um, work? You know, I think it's uh, myself and the staff, the, the gopher staff, you know, it's primarily us. Mm -hmm. Um, and it depends on the guys, certain guys we go after, obviously we talk and we look up where could we use a weight? You know what I mean? We, uh, where do we need partners? You know, where well, like at the Olympic training opening. center, for example, there's, there's people that are their national team and then there's developmental sure. athletes and there's facility use athletes. Sure. Well, we, uh, I mean, we have a system where if you're national team, you make so much money. Um, if you're a NCAA champion, you get so much money, you know, it goes all American. National champion. Yeah, so coming that's out, college. coming out, so that's you're out coming college. out as an NCAA champion. Say Tony Nelson, for example, sure. coming out as a two-time champ. I'm going to go senior level. Uh, do I go Sunkiss? Do I go? Mm -hmm. Where do I train? RTC. Now, and that's another thing. Uh, if they're with the with the Minnesota RTC, tip, typically they're going to be storm athletes. Although, is there anything preventing them from training here and being a Sunkiss athlete? No. Probably won't happen, but it's it kind of goes with the territory, right? Yeah, I mean, and when you're looking at like. Titan Mercury, mm -hmm. where they sponsor essentially everybody, everybody. <laughs> um, it's like, well, they want to throw money at certain athletes of ours. And that's kind of something we're working through and, and figuring out how that works, because we still want them to, to be Minnesota Storm and, and wear the Minnesota Storm singlet. Um, and they are in the representative training here. They are representing us. But um, but not saying like a, a guy who is who is a, a Titan Mercury guy that I'm just going to come out. I'm going to come out and train at the Minnesota RTC. Yeah. Even though even though he's not a gopher, for example. Mm -hmm. So just curious on how that works. Um, like we're, this is something we're still working through, okay. but, uh, you know, we don't have a problem, I guess. And it's all, you know, it depends on the guy who we're talking about, what their situation is. Um, but you know, we can make things work with other clubs and the Titan Mercury's of the world while still training here. But, you know, if a guy comes in and, and he's more of a practice room guy, if he's doing well, he's showing up to all the practice, doing everything we ask, working hard. Um, we're going to send him to tournaments. He does well, then he could, you know. Mm -hmm. get a stipend based on that and based on what he shows us. But if you're coming out of college and you have credentials, then there's a number that you'll get. If you're a national team, your number gets bumped and you get paid more. Last thing we're going to wrap up. We had uh, Brett Farr came on as former gopher, but then Nazar Kolchitsky came over from, from Madison where he was a division three champion three times for Wisconsin Oshkosh and a dynamic guy. He's been on the ladder, mm -hmm. been on the national team and uh, another, a non gopher mm -hmm. in, in the Minnesota RTC. I think the last one you had was Kevin LaValle for, you know, he was, a, he was a grad student here and all that. But you know, when you, when you get somebody like Nazar to come in, I mean, what type of dynamic does he bring? Not just as, you know, he's getting to the point where he's not a, a young mm -hmm. senior level athlete. He's, he's getting there where he's had success internationally. Mm -hmm. He grew up, you know, in Ukraine, go figure, right. you know, sure, yeah. you know, Brings back cold memories there, yes, but it does. You know, what, what's what's Nazar bring to it, and what was it like bringing him into the fray? Um, just like we're talking about with Trevor, it's just an outside outside perspective. Uh, someone who can come in and have different ideas, and uh, you, and these guys are more than just athletes; they're coaches, they're mentors for for the program. Um, so we lean on them too for for different ideas and it comes to training and, and going about doing things. But uh, him growing up in Ukraine is is a pretty cool dynamic and, and that his whole system, the youth system they do is completely different. And, and it's just fun to pick his brain and, and, uh, foot sweeps, foot sweeps. he's got some nasty foot. Sweeps. Yeah. And he does, <laughs> right. We're just rusting the other day and he was just showing some stuff and I was like, wow, it's things I haven't felt, you know, and that's, that's great for our other storm guys that are wrestling these foreigners, these Eastern Europeans, that they can feel some of these things that he does that maybe we weren't taught growing up. Um, so it's just diversifying the wrestling room, you know, if we can continue to bring in guys um, from different places, different countries, and 
you know, give, give different feels and ideas. That's what we want to do. Dustin's got to skedaddle a bit. Appreciate the time. We'll, we'll do this again sometime. Dustin Schlater, freestyle coach for the Minnesota Storm. Absolutely. Thanks, Jason. Support wrestling in the land of 10,000 wrestlers by subscribing to The Guillotine. Nine issues a year for just $20, the best value in Minnesota wrestling. Subscribe at theguillotine.com slash subscribe. This show is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.